Hello everyone, welcome Ooh. to Cappadocia. I'm Justina. And I'm Omar. And this is our Fiat Doblo micro camper. The coolest micro camper you might ever possibly see. Ever, 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 <laughs> ever. <laughs> for almost two years. One year and nine months to be specific. And in that time, this van has seen a lot. It's taken us through thousands of kilometers through Europe, through the UK. It's seen us get married in this exact van in Gibraltar. We've been up mountains, we've been in minus temperatures, we've been in plus 35 degrees. We've seen earthquakes in this van. We've met loads of people. It's been amazing. And we want to show you what a van looks like after almost two years on the road with upgrades. Let's go. It is a Fiat Doblo from 2007. It is the 1.9 diesel multi-jet, uh, the highest power engine you can get. It is a standard wheelbase. There is a long wheelbase edition. There is a high top. This is the standard one. It used to be an MPV, so it has seats in the back and it has windows all around and it's classed as an MPV, just like a car. As you can see, it's very dirty right now. We are in Cappadocia in Turkey. There's lots of off-roading to do and it's a lot of fun. So. Hopefully you like it looking like that. We've got a lovely big roof box up there. We bought that second hand in Germany for about 30 euros and it's been amazing. Tinted windows, 5%, as dark as possible. We've got a little light bar down here. This helps us out when we're reversing in very dark places because the tints are quite dark and we don't have a reverse camera. Bigger all-terrain tires, these are Nankang FT7s. And these are basically the biggest size tire you can fit on a Doblo without making any really crazy changes because um, there's, yeah, there's not much space. These are 175 80 15s, slightly bigger than the original tires, which give us a little bit of an extra lift. And talking of lift, we actually made a lift kit for this van, so it's lifted 30 millimeters. On this side of the roof, we have the solar panel, which is 100 watts. We can actually tilt this and we have an additional outside light which was a white light but we just made it yellow to make it a bit nicer and we can tilt that at night time so we can see what we're doing in the dark. And you may have noticed on the first van tour or any of our videos we had a nice big scratch here but that has now been fixed now that we're in Turkey. And we also have some wind deflectors, usual standard thing for a camper van so you can crack the windows and let that sweet ventilation come in and out. As we come around to the front we have a new life bar, which is very, very powerful. Quite nice, quite chunky. And I think it makes the van look quite cool. <laughs> Two other subtle additions that you may or may not notice. An exhaust pipe for a diesel heater and a filler for LPG. We'll get more into those when we get inside. Okay, before we get into the back, we're gonna show you the cabin area. And basically what we've done here is made it more comfortable and more entertaining to drive. We've upgraded the stereo, we've got upgraded speakers, additional speakers here, we've got tweeters and additional speakers up by our heads. The dash speakers are upgraded and the door speakers are also upgraded. Under the driver's seat we've got an under seat subwoofer which we can control the level of bass from here. There are also four USBs which we've replaced the cigarette lighters with. We also have air conditioning, which is super nice. Not all Doblos have air conditioning, but it is really nice. Uh, in the winter and in the summer, it is very useful. As for decoration, we've got a couple of additions, Cappadocia balloon and a lovely little plant that lives here. And something that has changed in the front here is down by the passenger's feet, there is a Chinese diesel heater. We installed this after being in the mountains in Spain and seeking some warmth and heat. And basically lives down here because it's the only spot we could really fit it after building the van. But it has been amazing, it's a total game changer and we absolutely love it. Heater pipe runs under the seat and blows hot air straight into the back of the van and it gets very toasty very quickly. The heater is also plumbed straight into the main diesel tank so don't have to worry about any additional tanks filling or leaking. It is super easy and simple. Now another major change we did to this van which totally transformed it is turning this front area into a lounge. Let me show you. Lounge slash office, whatever you want to make it. 
So, slide the front seat forwards and swivel. Welcome to the office lounge and basically I've made this a very comfortable working space by adding a little slide out table here and then my laptop goes here, this pillow goes here on my lap, Bluetooth keyboard, get me mouse, mouse which I use either here or here and then oh, we got comfortable working space. I can sit like this if I want. I can stretch my legs out. And it's really nice because I'm looking straight at the screen, not having to do this or something silly. Very comfortable. And I love hanging out here. And Justina can say the same because she gets to hang out in the back. Yeah. <laughs> the swivel seat was from a Fiat Ducato and we had to customize it. There's no swivel seat bases available just to bolt in for the Doblo. So it was a bit of a custom fab operation, but uh, not too bad. Thank you, Adrian, for helping. And it has totally transformed the van. Under the passenger seat, we have the diesel heater outlet here, which we can basically kind of direct, rotate, whatever, prop it up and shoot hot air wherever we need to shoot it. And next to the diesel heater outlet, we have a big 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery from Deadway Industries their Dakar battery. This has been amazing. Like we had a lithium ion battery before from them. It was only 20 amp hours. It was basically used from my previous car and we put it in here because we had that. So we used it. Now we have five times the power and it is absolutely awesome. We can charge all of our electronics, the laptop, we can run the diesel heater, blender, all of the electric things. And talking about electrics, we're going to continue onto that section now. So over here is our electrics panel and there are a few changes that have been made. One, uh, the diesel heater controller lives here and a new bigger inverter and a new bigger inverter. This is six and a 600 watt inverter, which means we can run any household appliance up to 600 watts. We also have two USBs here. We have an additional cigarette lighter here. So we've got a total of two of those and we've got the main uh, electric cutoff switch and a volt gauge which doesn't really get used um, I just made a little cover for it because the blue light from it is quite bright so we just leave it covered up really. Carbon monoxide alarm which is never triggered in the almost two years that we've been living in this van. The battery can be charged while we're driving through a DC to DC 20 amp charger. We don't have to use it all the time we have it on a switch so if we need to we can turn it on and the battery will charge as we're driving. It is also charged by the solar panel on our roof, which is controlled by an MPPT 20 amp solar controller as well. A big advantage of this van being a passenger vehicle uh, is having two sliding doors. So we can have all of this stuff here and have great access to it, which basically um, remove this box under the floor here. That's where the DC to DC charger lives, along with a few other random objects that don't get used that often. Same here, we were able to put the solar controller here through the sliding door, nice and handy. And we also have our nice full bag of laundry, we need to do laundry soon, and our water containers. So while we're here, let's move on to the subject of water, because we have here our 20 litre water container. This is our main big tank for the van. It has a 12 volt water pump in it, which is powered by this switch here. And we have a lovely household tap. It is a mixer tap, but we only have cold water. And it looks like that. We can also pull this tap out and use it as a shower, which we're gonna show you a bit later. Just next to the fresh water, we have the gray water container, which is also 20 liters. Anything from the sink goes straight into there. And it means we don't have to drop our waste directly to the ground. I'm not sure if this was here the last time we did the van tour, but yeah, it's basically a soap holder right next to the sink because I think last time we just had a bar of soap and it was kind of annoying to get soapy and yeah, this is just much easier. If you're wondering what this is, I'll tell you about it in a bit. 
In total, we have 37 liters of water. Four bottles of water live here under the seat on the top of the subwoofer and it holds six and a half liters. Here we have five liters of water. And here in the back, we have another five liters of water. We added those bottles over time because we realized that 20 liters is definitely not enough. This van may look small from the outside, but on the inside, it's a bit like a TARDIS. So let's start off with some storage, shall we? Under the floor here, we've got a bit of storage where the rear footwells used to be. Above the driver's cabin, we've extended the uh, original overhead storage. And this basically holds all of our bed things. So on this side, we've got pillows. On this side, we've got our duvet and a blanket. And in the middle, we have the front window covers and the curtain that separates the front area from the back. Even the driver's seat is used for storage. We have our head torches here, nice and handy for when we need them. And we have this hanging uh, storage bag thing, which uh, used to be a clear plastic here, but that didn't last very long. And up here we have our lovely roof, which has two dimmable LED lights. It's really nice being able to dim them because sometimes you don't want brah, full blast uh, <laughs> at night or in the morning. And just over here we have the light switch for our exterior light. As for ventilation, we have a little mushroom vent on the roof here. That's what these holes are for. And inside that mushroom vent, I fitted a computer fan, which is switched on just here. A cool thing about this van is we have pop-out side windows, which we made still accessible. This one has a mosquito net on it for the bugs. And also here we have a new addition, which is storage. And behind here, we've got basically books. Before this was just kind of dead space, so I decided let's try and squeeze every centimeter we can out of this little van. Let's talk about the kitchen. Although we have a small van, I wanted to have a big kitchen because I like to cook and it was important to us to comfortably cook inside. And the kitchen is the best part of this van for me. <laughs> <laughs> and our kitchen extends like this. If we need to have more space, we can put stuff here as well and also we can cook outside. But in this whole time, uh, maybe we cooked three times outside and that is it. Only because I like to cook inside because everything is handy and I don't need to jump outside and inside to, of the van. We have a nice big three hop cooker which Omar modified it a little bit. So it is fixed, it doesn't move when uh, we drive. By two bolts and wing nuts, so we can easily remove that and place it over here if we want to cook outside. The cooker is powered by a six kilogram refillable LPG bottle, which holds about 11 and a half liters. It lives in here, in our messy cupboard, which doesn't look really different to what it used to. We still have our lovely little brush here. And before, we used to have to take all of this stuff out and take the gas bottle out to refill our gas. It was a bit of a process and it kind of became like annoying if we knew that we would have to get gas. So what we did is add an external filler kit, which is basically a pipe running from the outside of the van to the gas bottle, which means this doesn't have to move, it stays fixed in place. And if we need to fill up our gas, all we have to do is pull up to a petrol station, connect the LPG nozzle to the bumper down there and fill up our gas, just like you would fill up any LPG car. It's been a total game changer having this bottle and additionally having the external filler kit. Before it was a bit stressful trying to fill up this bottle and maybe not technically legal in every country because filling it directly to the bottle, uh, some places don't like that. So it's now safer and more legal and less stress. We love this bottle. And we definitely recommend it because traveling through Europe, there's all different kinds of bottles and just trying to exchange them and swap them out, it's, it's a faff. So a bit more cost to start with, but I think in the long run, you save money. This only costs us maybe six or seven euros to fill up totally. And that will last us maybe a month and a half, two months, depending on how much we're cooking. This is our main big kitchen cupboard, which stores uh, plates, 
cutlery, uh, dry food, spices, and on the very bottom, frying pans, pots, bowls. And this time we have an omni oven, which means we have a mini version of the oven in the kitchen, which is really game changer for cooking. This was present for my mom, and now we can make pizza, bread, cakes, literally anything you can imagine to make in the oven. We have one slide out table over here, which we're using for chopping the veggies or eating. And we have another second table over here, which we discovered just one day by accident. We can just put top of the cooker on the open cupboard. And we have another table, which is great. Great accident. This is just blank because behind it there are water containers. And this little cupboard has our uh, bathroom box and electric box. All of the cupboards have magnets and little hooks to keep them secure when Omo is driving like a madman. <laughs> our sink is a bamboo bowl which comes from a particular Swedish furniture shop and it cost only 10 euros. We upcycled it because it used to be our old fruit bowl. So we thought it can be a great use for our little van. And this fruit bowl is very old. It comes from my home and it has been in my home since I was a child. It doesn't sleep while we drive because we have a bungee cord holding it and no slip layer underneath. But we can move it if we need to. This is the space where we hold our kitchen essentials with spices, coasters from Egypt, oils, tea, cups. Very simple but very effective. And for extra uh, ventilation we have a proper window which is great while I cook. Omar made me also a little vase which is very cute little addition for the van because that was something what I was missing. Right, so this is our sofa. As you can see, we can cook very easily, reach everything very easily. We can also open the back door here. We've got a little door pull thing. <laughs> One important thing for us in this van is because obviously you cannot stand up in here, uh, was being able to sit comfortably. And that means not building the bed too high. So I can sit straight. Yeah, my head is just about touching, uh, but it is comfortable. So the sofa slash bed, it has a few modes, and I'm going to show you the first one now, and that is extended sofa mode. This one pulls out here, and then we fold out like this. We move this pillow, cushion, mattress thing, here and then we have a lovely large sofa or single bed we can easily fit four five people on this bench plus one in the swivel seat yeah <laughs> there's been a few occasions where we've had four people in here all having dinner and it's absolutely lovely and comfortable and cozy and everyone says wow can't believe how easily we can fit in here and how cozy and comfortable it is the next mode is mini bed mode. So we're going to put extended sofa mode away. Fold this. Put this back in. Right. And then it looks a bit of a faff. It's because we have these basically a mattress used to get a bit wet with the condensation. This is like a breathable squishy layer and it is held with the condensation. A mattress no longer gets wet, but it adds a little bit more faff to making our bed. We can still make our bed and do everything from inside, but yeah, it's just two extra pieces to the puzzle. <laughs> okay. This goes back like that. Okay, all right, <laughs> and this is mini bed mode where we can 
basically, if we want to have a little nap midday or if we just want to have a little lay down, uh, we can just like this. And it means we can still access this area. I can get in and out to the swivel seat. We can still easily get in and out of the door. Another mode is almost the almost bed <laughs> where usually maybe I'm chilling on the swivel seat or I'm editing a video. It's getting late. Justina wants to go to bed. Uh, she can kind of do it like this and we have still access to this little area for my feet or whatever. And then full bed mode. This one folds out over to here. This one goes here. We slide these up to the seat. And we have our lovely bed. Oh. Oh. So, this bed is 185 centimeters long and 97 centimeters wide. I am 178 centimeters tall. And for me, this bed is very, very comfortable. And actually, now that we've added the swivel seat on the passenger side, there is even more space for extra tall person. As you can see, lots of space. Now let's make the bed, shall we? We also have a little fan here, which gets used sometimes when we need to dry wet things. So, pillow number one. Pillow number two. Extra pillows, slash children, blanket. It's like a, just, I don't know, just things keep coming out of it, eh? Whoa. And our nice duvet. Wow. Look at this. Usually in the winter, we sleep with this blanket on the top of us, but in the summer, this is nice and light and yeah, it's good. We've got a cable here so we can charge our phone and watch all of our cool videos. Oh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to Team of Team. Um, and we can also sleep the opposite way if we need to. If we're parked somewhere not quite level, we can sleep with our heads this side of the bed. But over time, we've learned to prefer this way. For most people in this size van, they will just go for a big bed and then they would have to kind of maybe make the kitchen um, come somewhere outside and they have to cook outside. But for us, it was important to have the fixed big kitchen. So we were happy to compromise with a bit of smaller <laughs> bed, basically. It is fine. We are a very cuddly couple, so we're quite happy to sleep cuddly <laughs> all the time. Ah. It's very cozy, it's very comfortable. I know the mattress doesn't look that thick. It is only six centimeters, but it is actually really comfortable. And if we go, for example, to sleep in a different bed and we come back to the van, we're really happy to be back in the van because it's just so comfortable and we're just so used to it. Yeah, we love it. Especially with that extra um, layer of, uh, under the mattress, mm -hmm. it's even, more comfortable yes. so it is great for windows we have insulated blinds made by my mom they live just over here nice and handy and they simply stick with, ma with magnets just like that nice simple and fast We also have a curtain which separates this area which we just hook on these little hooks. We also have blinds for the front windows. These front blinds used to be like a really light color and I think they didn't really look great when they were on the van. So we changed them to black and it kind of matches the rest of the windows and I think it looks pretty cool and 
kind of hard to tell that uh, maybe it's a blind or if it's a tinted window. We don't use these too much, but in the summer or if it's really, really cold at night, like minus 10, then we'll use them. Uh, and yeah, this front one we use quite often, even on a day like today where it's quite sunny. A lot of heat comes in through the front window, which is nice to a point, but we don't have a fridge also. So trying to keep the van cool inside helps our vegetables last a little bit longer. All right, give me that. I'll show you how dark it is in here now. Okay, lights off. And that's how it looks like. Usually we have like a jacket here, which hides that extra bit of light. But if you needed to, you could sleep in here when it's bright sun outside and it's dark enough. Now that the bed stuff is out of the storage, you can see uh, it's quite dark, but we also have a hot water bottle here, just in case we actually got that before the diesel heater. And we can store like food stuff like really deep in here and it goes behind the bed stuff. Yeah, just stuff like baby wipes, some moisturizer and a mini hoover, which we use a lot. Our bed looks pretty much the same, except of two little changes we did to make it easier to access the clothes, which we store underneath the bed. We moved this piece of wood a little bit this direction, so it fits perfectly to pull out this basket in the middle. And we sand this wood Oops, so it is also easy to pull. We don't need to reach and pull basket and then. It was a little bit tricky before, but now it's much, much easier. Also, if we need to access from the top of the basket, we can pull out this side of bed and uh, have an easy access to those. I have one basket uh, of clothes, one basket for Omar, and we share the middle baskets, which we source pants and socks. Also around this side of the bed, we do have some additional cosmetic things in this bag. And I also moved our torque wrench here, so I could actually access it when I need it, uh, just in case I need it at night to, to check the torque of the wheels, you know. And we also have our toilet, which is this little bucket for emergencies. And this is used when we don't have access to a public toilet or we don't have enough wilderness to do our business outside. You may also remember that little bottle next to the solar controller. Well, you can probably imagine what that's used for. Okay, last but not least is our shower and our roof box. So we're gonna show you that right now. So to make a shower, we have these three pieces of wood. We put one in there. We put one in there. We put one like this. And then we open our door, rotate our tap, extend, and we place shower like that and that's our outdoor shower to be honest it doesn't get used that much it doesn't really get used in winter at all we mainly use it when it's warm weather we actually used it yesterday because we just came back from a hike and it was really lovely and sunny and we didn't mind having the cold shower if we really want to we can warm up water put it in the bucket take the water pump out of the container put it into the bucket and run water through here 40 50 degrees and have a hot shower but by the time you've done all that, it's a bit of a faff and it's just a bit easier to get that warm water, scoop it in a cup and give yourself a shower with a cup like that. But when it is warm, it's nice to pull this out and quickly have a nice wash. We do also have uh, shower curtains for this. So when we're somewhere where we need a bit of privacy, we can make a little cubicle and have a private shower. So up in the roof box, we have a few things like a camping chair. We do actually have a hammock. We have our hiking boots. We have our backpacks. We have some tools. Basically everything extra that doesn't fit or have a place inside the van 
goes up there. It does restrict us a little bit with some car parks, but it would be very difficult to live in this van without that roof box. As I mentioned earlier, the solar panel can also release and tilt up like this. I'm not gonna do it now. I'll just put in some footage of it being tilted. But uh, basically we haven't actually had to use that. But it can be handy when you have a consecutive amount of not very clear days and you're running low on power and you don't wanna move. But so far we haven't been in that situation with this new battery, so we haven't actually had to tilt it. That's our little Fiat Doblo which we built in Poland. It took us three months initially, and then we spent maybe another three months doing all these different little upgrades that you've just seen. Hopefully you guys like it. Let us know in the comments if it's the best micro camper you've ever seen. Because for us, it's definitely the best, and we absolutely love this little van. Yeah, coming up to two years of full-time van life, and it is absolutely awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching, and we're gonna see you next time. Remember to like and subscribe and leave us a comment below if you like this video. Bye.